Welcome to People, Places, Planet Pod, the official podcast of the Environmental Law Institute, a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization working to ensure a healthy environment, prosperous economies, and vibrant communities founded on the rule of law. Welcome to this week's episode of the People, Places, Planet Podcast. I'm Heather Ludke, a research associate here at the Environmental Law Institute. And this week, we're diving into Eli's environmental justice initiatives in an effort to keep Eli members and supporters up to date on our programming throughout the coming year and beyond. We are joined today by Ariel King, Eli's environmental justice staff attorney, who will talk about the tools we are developing to eliminate the harmful impacts of environmental injustice. Ariel joined ELI in August 2021, bringing with her a background in environmental racism analysis, political ecology, critical race theory, sustainability, civil rights law, and integrating equity and environmental justice considerations into climate action plans. Ariel, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really looking forward to sharing ELI's environmental justice initiatives with our listeners. Thanks, Heather. Hello, everyone, and Happy New Year. As Heather mentioned, my name is Arielle King, and I am the EJ staff attorney here at ELI. We're building a robust and practical environmental justice program in addition to working to ensure effective reflection of the EJ principles and considerations across ELI's research, publications, and education activities. Environmental justice embraces the principle that all people deserve equal access to environmental protection and enforcement, recognizing that this, both historically and currently, often is not the case, and communities that receive the least benefits are experiencing the greatest environmental burdens. In the United States, these communities are predominantly low income and or black indigenous people of color. The legal system has contributed to this unequal distribution of environmental burdens and benefits in many ways, and we at ELI are committed to providing research and educational tools to help alleviate the harm faced by environmental justice communities across this nation. As the name of this podcast suggests, ELI's mission is to make law work for people, places, and planet in that order. We are working hard to build a set of tools that will help communities receive the legal services they need at no cost, provide accessible updates to environmental justice initiatives at the local, state, and federal level, and offer continued learning opportunities for practitioners, in-house counsel, law and policy makers, and anyone else who would like to expand their knowledge in environmental justice through the legal lens. We strive to make all of our environmental justice programming free and available to the public, regardless of membership status. And we are always looking for opportunities to partner with organizations to do individual projects and programming. So if anything you hear about today piques your interest, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. ELI's EJ program is being built on the past work of ELI staff, scholars, and visiting attorneys, and is guided by a statement issued by our board of directors in 2020, committing to anti-racism and the advancement of environmental justice, both internally at ELI and throughout the work that we create. I am so thrilled to be able to share some of the impactful work ELI is doing to advance environmental justice in the coming year. Some of the projects and programs I'm sharing about today will have future full-length podcast episodes throughout the year, so keep an eye out for those. First, I want to share about one of our newest initiatives, the Pro Bono Clearinghouse. Led by attorneys Scott Badenoch and Aaron Aber, the Clearinghouse program will help match communities experiencing environmental harm with attorneys who will provide free legal resources. Our Clearinghouse strives to ensure that communities with viable environmental legal matters get the representation they need, whether it be in a courtroom, in front of an agency, or in a more facilitative or consultative fashion. This will be accomplished by connecting environmental law clinics with the many hundreds of environmental law members that we have at ELI and at our various collaborating organizations, like the American Bar Association Section of Environment, Energy, and Resources. We're also coordinating with the Anthropocene Alliance, the Chesapeake Legal Alliance, Thriving Earth Exchange, and several other organizations to support their EJ community members, and we will be posting their matters regularly as well. 
the website for the clearinghouse goes live very soon. And each attorney who opts in to assist with matters through the clearinghouse will be required to take part in our new curriculum focused on environmental justice and community lawyering. The first session of the CLE webinar series is scheduled for January 25th, 2022 at 3 p.m. EST. And it focuses on key concepts, skills, and practice-oriented specifics of community lawyering for environmental justice. Those interested in attending can register using the link in the show notes. And if any of you are interested in providing insights or resources for the curriculum, please feel free to contact me. As a leader in environmental scholarship, ELI has consistently published articles, books, and other publications related to environmental justice. Our monthly flagship publication, the ELR, or Environmental Law Reporter, has published hundreds of EJ articles over the years. In the September 2021 issue, we had an article focused on racial segregation and environmental injustice, and it was an excerpt from a book that will be released by ELI Press called Environmental Law Disrupted. In 2022, we look forward to continuing this work, and we are starting off strong with the Environmental Forum's January-February 2022 issue titled Justice, Time to Put Words into Action. For those who are not aware, the Environmental Forum is ELI's policy magazine that gets published six times a year. This issue is full of thoughtful critiques and recommendations on the most pressing legal issues, which of course includes environmental justice. We're also currently working on the fifth edition of Environmental Justice, Legal Theory and Practice by visiting scholar Barry Hill. This edition will be available in preparation for the 2022-23 school year. And just as a reminder, ELI has multiple different types of publications, and I would urge anyone interested in writing for us on a topic related to environmental law to please contact us. To do more to train, mentor, and ultimately retain more law students of color in the field of environmental law and further advance meaningful environmental justice efforts, last year ELI established an environmental justice clerkship program in collaboration with the Howard University School of Law. With the generous support of the True Cost Initiative in 2021 and Kroll, Mooring, and Sieve, and Paget and Riesel in 2022, Howard Law students are paid to work closely with ELI experts on a variety of projects, expanding their knowledge of environmental justice and environmental law generally, and further developing their legal research and writing skills. The clerkship program also connects students with accomplished environmental professionals to broaden their exposure to environmental career options. The first year was a huge success and we look forward to so much more to come. <clears throat> the EJ in the Law pilot project created in collaboration with the Howard University School of Law environmental justice program is a new tool to provide a timely, accurate, and freely available digest of environmental justice related cases, legislation, and policy at the state and federal level. Thanks to the work of students from Howard Law School, each month of the academic year, EJ and the Law will summarize the past month's legal authorities, which will then be made available on the ELI website. As we've heard in other episodes of this podcast, environmental justice is a fast moving area of law and policy. And through this project, we look forward to documenting changes and trends as they occur. For example, in the first quarter of 2021, two states and the federal government enacted seven statutes and more than 80 bills were introduced nationwide expressly to address or call attention to environmental justice. Having that type of information in one place helps create opportunities for collaboration, consistency, and increased accountability. This project aligns deeply with ELI's desire to improve access to environmental legal information for all people. Meaningful public participation and involvement in decision making are key elements of environmental justice, and access to information is a building block of self-determination for communities that have historically been overlooked and overburdened. Since I'm supervising this project directly, I want to acknowledge that environmental justice touches nearly every sector and industry in one way or another. So while the summaries we're creating through this project are comprehensive, they may not touch every single aspect of what we may consider environmental justice issues. 
However, this project is a pilot and we're looking forward to receiving and implementing feedback on ways to make it more user-friendly as people begin to use this tool. Here at ELI, we recently announced a new initiative to advance racial equity and justice for indigenous tribes in California. Thanks to a grant from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation's Policies for Action program, ELI and its partner, the National Association of Tribal Historic Preservation Officers, or NAFPO, will use California as a case study to examine policies requiring state and local agencies to engage in government-to-government -government consultation with tribes when carrying out environmental decision-making. Swinomish elder Larry Campbell and Dr. Jamie Natuto are also members of the project team, and they are pioneers of developing and utilizing indigenous health indicators to measure tribal health and wellness as defined by tribal communities themselves. This project combines indigenous knowledge and environmental decision-making to help develop holistic solutions and governance strategies. Often, state and local environmental agencies do not incorporate the physical, mental, and spiritual wellness aspects of life that are tied to environmental health. So we look forward to assessing the ways to improve public participation in environmental decision-making for tribes in California with this project, with the hope that it will be used as a model for other states. The BRIGHT or Blight Revitalization Initiative for Green Healthy Towns program was created in an effort to improve public participation in redevelopment plans for blighted areas to combat development that is contrary to the needs of the surrounding community. The program identifies corridors of blighted, vacant, or environmentally impaired properties in overburdened communities and supports the community and municipality in developing a revitalization plan. While COVID has hindered our ability to go into communities and work through our development plans as we have in neighborhoods like Whitesburg, Kentucky or neighborhoods in Washington, DC, the ELI team has been working on a guide to accompany this work. I'd recommend everyone take a look at the guide on the ELI webpage to learn from its tools. And now that this version of the guide is near completion, we are seeking community partners to collaborate with for future redevelopment plans. Finally, I just want to give a quick update on some webinars and other podcasts related to EJ that we have in the pipeline and mention that we look forward to collaborating with more of our members and partners to host webinars on topics related to environmental justice throughout 2022 and beyond. In October of 2021, we celebrated the 30th anniversary of the first National People of Color Environmental Leadership Summit. This groundbreaking four-day conference hosted right here in Washington, D.C., brought together grassroots environmental justice leaders from all over the United States to discuss ways to eliminate the harmful impacts of environmental racism and to demand justice and change. One of the most notable documents to come out of this conference was the 17 Principles of Environmental Justice, a template for a world where true environmental justice prevails. This year, ELI will invite guests to speak about different principles and discuss what changes are necessary in law and policy to actualize them today. In partnership with Latham & Watkins, ELI is hosting a webinar series outlining the notable events and current gaps to advancing environmental justice within the court system. This three-part series dives deep into the history of environmental justice cases and analyzes those that have created tremendous precedent from Alexander V. Sandoval, a 2001 Supreme Court case which declared that citizens do not have a private right of action to bring a claim based on ev evidence of disparate impact, to the Fourth Circuit Friends of Buckingham case where the court made clear that environmental justice is not just a box to be checked, and the many, many cases in between which have shaped the way that we creatively use the legal system to advance environmental justice. And with that, I want to thank you all for listening to this episode. And thank you to the People, Places, and Planet podcast for having me on today to share some of the projects and programs we're working on here at ELI related to environmental justice. And as I mentioned at the top of the episode, I'm always happy to hear from people interested in working with us to strengthen this EJ program. My email is king at eli.org, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, and again, have a happy new year. Thank you for tuning in to People, Places, Planet Pod. 
brought to you by the Environmental Law Institute. We would like to hear from you, so please send us your questions, comments, and ideas to podcast at ELI.org. And if you're interested in learning more about our work, attending one of our events, reading our publications, or becoming a member, please visit our website at www.eli.org.